Welcome to Build a Drone Reviewer Podcast, Episode 66, Rotor Talk Live. Very special guest, Billy Kyle. Got that coming up next. Recently, I had the opportunity to have Billy Kyle as a very special guest on Rotor Talk Live. We talked about a number of subjects. As I stated in the broadcast itself, I probably could have talked to Billy for easily two to three hours. We did find out a little bit more about what Billy's plans are post-graduation from college and what he's doing full-time for his business right now. So without any further ado, let's roll that broadcast in its entirety. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to season three, episode 24. And I don't, if I have to introduce my very special guest tonight, y'all got a problem, okay? <laughs> Billy, welcome. How are you this evening? Good, good. How are you doing? I'm just pulling up the chat. Good, good, good. Well, you know, before we get started, there's one thing that, that, I, that I wanted to do, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Now, um, uh, let's see, did I get it? Okay. All right. Well, we have a college graduate in the house here, folks. Okay. <laughs> uh, Billy graduated from yes. college. All right. And of course, if you need, if you need to know who that person is next to him, you probably don't know Billy either. Okay. Um, that, 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 that is, his, that is, that is Francesca. And I, I absolutely love, uh, this is just a great picture. Absolutely love this picture. Thank you. And, and Billy, I, you know, I do want to say, say for, for myself and my wife, Congratulations, because, you know, there is still value in a college degree. I want to let you know. Oh, yeah. OK, um, a lot of people say, you know, oh, it's just, you know, da, 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 four years, debt, all this stuff. I know. But no, I think you learn a discipline. You learn how to, you know, you learn how to run a do do everything. OK, it really prepares you for life. And mm -hmm. and I'll tell you what, we, we wish you all the success in the world with your business. Thank and you. Everything. And I just wanted to start off off the show with this because I thought, you know, I, I thought it was important enough that, that, that we acknowledge this. And I hope everybody in the chat, make sure you throw up a like and throw that like up to wish Billy congratulations in that. And also in the chat as well, too. So Definitely. job well done, Billy. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. You know what? It's like uh, it's kind of weird because at that moment when you graduate college, of course, you graduate high school and you go on to like a brand new you know, four years at college or maybe six or eight, eight years, however long you're going to spend studying whatever you um, plan to do with your life. But when you graduate college, it's like such a different, it's such a different feeling because you go from schooling your whole entire life to now no school. And it's almost like, what do you do with your time? You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, yeah, it's, it's like, okay, you've, you've been in this, in this routine and this pattern mm -hmm. of studying exams you know, papers, you know, yes. you know, just, just uh, going to labs, all that kind of stuff. And then it's just, it's done. You're done. That's it. And it's just, like, well, for me, it ended up, um, I was, I was lucky. I graduated in May and I ended up getting my first full-time job in June. So that was, I was kind of, nice. I was kind of fortunate with that mm -hmm. because, you know, that doesn't always happen that way. But I mean, this is back in 1980. So it wasn't, you know, like the economy was was certainly a whole different yes. thing today. But why don't you share with us, you know, a, a lot of people know you from, you know, a drone review standpoint. But, you know, you're in, you've already started a business and this is mm -hmm. going to be your full time gig. Why don't you why don't you go over and explain a little bit of that to everybody? Yeah, so I started my YouTube channel uh, like when I was entering college, and I bought a drone. I just thought it'd be cool to make uh, tutorial videos on it, and from there, you know, that's how I've gotten to the point where I'm at now. And my interest in drones has given me an interest in photography and, and videography. Um, and you know, I like shooting photos, I like shooting videos, and then you kind of think about how you can monetize that. Uh, and there's not many avenues because it's kind of seen as like an art. You, you got to figure how can you make money with your camera um, and you've got to figure out who is willing to pay. So I got wrapped up with a couple of people and I started doing real estate photography and real estate videography. And that's kind of been my thing. Um, and I've been doing it for the past two years on and off really over the past four months. It's been kind of heavy. I, I've kind of taken a deep dive into it. Uh, and I saw that with the pandemic going on right now and the school kind of transitioning to a virtual platform that that was like an early graduation for me. So 
I had to figure out a way to kind of solidify the fact that I wanted to do this full time. So I started doing real estate uh, very heavily. And it's kind of nice knowing that I've got the ability to go out and make money right now in a world that's kind of turned upside down because there's kids that go to my school. There's kids that graduated in my class, uh, all of which or some of which had a job opportunity light up lined up and it got taken away from them or now they're looking at jobs and the market is so scarce because of what's going on now and people of course are getting laid off that aren't even coming out of college so um it's something that i'm really grateful for and it's something that now looking back on it i never knew this would have happened but i'm happy i made that decision to do that because if i was trying to find a job right now it'd be kind of tough well yeah you know your decision in going for this you know, starting a business is scary in and of itself, mm-hmm. but but it helps when, 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 for instance, you know, your knowledge of drones, obviously, you know, that there's no question about that. But, you know, you take the deep dive into starting and running a business, doing your own, you know, bookkeeping, for example, um, you know, uh, just, just c- collecting, um, you know, accounts, accounts payable, accounts receivable. You know, it, it's just it's just a whole different thing. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, the, The drone thing is one thing, you know, but then the business thing, that's a whole nother thing because I had started to look into it. And quite frankly, the thing that that got me away from that and not interested in it enough was the fact that down here in Florida, and I think Ken could probably tell you that, you know, people were like undercutting people by like five bucks to to get business in. And I said, you know what? I I told Mm -hmm. Valerie, I said, you know what? I'm not going to spend all this money and incorporate a business gets set up, get, get everything going and then get undercut by five bucks. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's go ahead. It's a real shame to see people kind of doing this thing where it's like a race to the bottom. You know, I mean, uh, you say, okay, I'll shoot the home for 150. I'll shoot it for 125. I'll shoot it for a hundred. I'll shoot for 75. And then someone says, I'll do it for free just to get your business. So it, it is really tough. Um, and I think that for anybody who's watching this and people who want to kind of start a business potentially not doing like real estate photography, but just anything, especially with drones is know your worth, know your value, know how much you want to charge and don't budge on that price. Um, I have somebody that I work with and he said a really good quote to me and it went something like, don't expect a hundred dollar client to be a $500 client, right? So if you're out there and if you have the time to kind of like, maybe you have a full-time job now um, and you've got time to kind of move into this business, don't jump in thinking I'm going to do work for $50 and then eventually work my way up and charge more, get in, start doing it start doing your work for what you feel that it's worth um, because you're going to attract those clients that value your time, that value your work, that value what you deliver to them. And they're going to pay you adequately because even if you start doing work for $25, your work is going to reflect because you're saying, ah, they're only paying 25 bucks for it. Uh, You know, I'm I'm just going to deliver something that's worth $25, but instead take the time to charge what you think it's worth. And you're going to find that it's just overall a lot more satisfying. Well, you know, one thing I can tell you, I have some, um, Ken knows him too. Don, Don Carson is his name, and he usually watches. He's from Pittsburgh, but he was telling me over in Pittsburgh. I don't know how it is over in your side of the state, but he, but, but it sounded like the it's like wide open. Like there's no real people that are really doing this over there. Okay. Am I right? It, it's kind of correct. There certainly are a lot of people out there that do real estate photography. To what capacity, I'm not sure. I mean, it's kind of like now I'm doing it full time. So it's all that I'm thinking about. And I might have more opportunities to invest more time into that business. So, you know, people that try to do it um, maybe part time, maybe for like on the weekend or something like that, their business might not grow as fast. But it is fairly wide open. There's a lot of real estate agents that I feel that like to jump around to different photographers. Maybe they have a bad experience. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know if I can ex- like kind of speak for everybody because, of course, people do business differently. But you've just got to make sure that you make yourself easy to work with, and then realtors will want to continue to use you because I, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like the stigma surrounding photographers is they're tough to deal with. Um, you know, sometimes there's people that are like pricing per image. Sometimes there's people that are like pricing per hour. But if you can just make things simple, and if you can make the realtor's job easy, whereas they can just give you a property address and you can take care of the rest and you just deliver the finished files. At the end of the day, it's just going to make their lives a lot easier and they'll be okay with paying you that extra money if you're somebody that wants to slot yourself as a more premium real estate photographer. Um, but yeah, in terms of being wide open, I think that there's a lot of room in this market for people to 
start their business, plant their roots, start picking up a couple of clients and then grow from there if it's something that you'd want to do full time. You know, and, and then when I say that compared to compared to it down in down here in Florida, mm-hmm. and, and I think Ken could probably tell you too. I mean, it's like it's like there's no elbow room. I mean, everybody's ever you know we're down in Florida, so we can fly all the time. Yeah. So it's like everybody has a drone. Everybody's probably got a part one hundred seven, and mm-hmm. you know it's just like you know. And here's the thing, and this is the thing that really kicks me, and I see this a lot, and I get a lot of get a lot of emails and comments about this. It's like. Oh, I have a part one of seven. I can hang my shingle up now and start making money. And it's just like, wait a minute here, guys. It's just, it doesn't work like that. Yep. You know that. I mean, it's, it, it's real obvious. I mean, it's just like, okay, for example, when you decide to take a dive into doing real estate photography full time, when you're doing that, okay, you need to count the cost. And the cost is not only, you know, your drones and, and that equipment, but what you're going to use to shoot inside. Cause I know. Yep. I saw what Ken uses and I'm like, holy crap. I mean, it's just like, you know, in the gear that you have to haul in, in for all this, mm-hmm. I mean, it's a lot, it's a, there's a lot of effort behind this. So, and I yes. really like what you had to say with, you know, charge what you think you're worth because mm-hmm. you know what? The good realtors will keep coming back and they'll keep using you because you give them a quality product. Exactly. And you want to figure something else. You want to figure out something that's going to help you stand out. Uh, and you're right. I mean, there is there is so many different pieces to the puzzle when you're doing real estate photography. There's lighting, there's the camera, there's the tripod you need. Uh, and it's like kind of like with drones. Uh, honestly, I think it's even worse with cameras. It's just like a never ending black hole that you can get sucked into. And you got to be careful because you can start spending all the money that you're making. So it, it is kind of tough. Um, I do have to say, though, that I, I'm super grateful because I got linked up with a photographer who already has a really well established real estate uh, photography business. And he's got connections with a lot of different agents. So I do some shooting for him. And it's given me the ability to um, I, I would say understand the business. It's given me an ability to understand how to do real estate photography in the right way. Um, and you know, me being young, him being a little bit older, it's kind of a good mentorship. But even if you're somebody that's a little bit older looking to get into the game, it's not bad to go and try to link up with another photographer and then try and shadow that person and learn from them. And that is if they're willing to like share their secrets with you about how to do things. But I think that like, even though I've now graduated college, uh, I feel like I'm almost starting up again now in the real world i'm like a i'm a student again and i think having that mentality that you're always somebody that's going to be learning in every aspect of life is such a great thing to have even though you know like you and i we post these videos about drones we probably have a lot of knowledge we're still learning like i still go on youtube and still learn from people so it's a great mentality to have and um you know that's that's probably the number one reason why i feel like uh, there's going to be any success for me to have in real estate photography, just continuing to learn. Well, you know, that, that and, and that's the name of the game. I mean, you know, uh, there, there was a quote by somebody and I forget, you know, the day that you stop learning is the day that um, they close the lid and you're going to be six feet under. Uh, and, and it's, and it's true. If, if you, if, if you, if you shut yourself down from that, I mean, now I, I'm probably three ish years away from retiring from my job. But I'm yeah. still learning things. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. you know, here's my degree. My degree, you know, it, it enabled me. It opened a lot of doors for me. OK, now, yeah. you know, did I use the applications from back in the day for a while? I did. But now it's like my, my career's taken a 180 in terms of, you know, what I'm doing in IT. And I still and I love it. Um, yeah. Question for you. OK, what has caused more of a bottleneck for you? COVID-19 or what's been going on lately with the rioting? <laughs> Definitely the rioting. Rioting. Um, so just from like a, like, I, I know we've been talking a lot about real estate photography, which is probably not the direction we wanted this to go, but regardless, right. with, with real estate, um, you know, these agents are trying to find like a brand new way to bring the homes to people that want to view them from inside. So now more than ever, it's like I'm shooting homes, not only the photos, but they want like a 360 tour. They want drone photos to show the property. They want um, a video to show the inside. So in that respect, it's kind of almost been booming. It's been the opposite of bottlenecking. But the riots here in Philly, it's it's insane. I mean, uh, even today, after things have kind of simmered down, the National Guard is still here trying to drive down the street. I was trying to take some back roads to avoid traffic on the interstate. And they had the, the road that I usually take completely blocked off with uh, five or six National Guard um, 
I guess, soldiers or, or troops standing there, guard. And it was just like, it's it's crazy to see. I mean, the target that I go to across the street is closed. Windows are boarded up. And um, they're using that as like a staging area for the National Guard. So it's crazy. You drive past and it looks like it's a military outpost or like a military base with all of these trucks and stuff. It's something that you never thought that you'd ever see. Um, I do a lot of shooting. I'm like really close to Jersey. So I'll be over in Jersey for a good amount of my time. But like there's also shoots I do in Philly that have just been either postponed or straight up canceled because they have this like zone in the center of the city um, that they basically declared like you can't be there past six o'clock or past, uh, you know, seven o'clock. And even then during the day, you don't feel like risking your life to go and shoot a home. You know, it's yeah. It's, it's pretty well, crazy. Well, you know, what we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna start talking about drones here because I know the, the natives are getting restless in the chat. Um, you know, the Mavic Air two, and, and I'm gonna start off with that because you know I think for me, you know, one of the things, you know, I keep trying to find things that I don't like about it, and I can't. No, nope. I mean, there's, and you know what. It's it's so crazy because every time a new DJI drone comes out, they somehow make it fly better than the last. And I think that that was completely evident when they came out with the Mavic Mini. And I was like, this thing might fly better than my Mavic 2 Pro just because of how it handled and how the controller felt. And obviously the software behind the scenes that goes into taking those controller inputs and turning it into what the drone does. Um, and it's it's really evident when you go from another manufacturer, anybody, it, Autel, Skydio, Parrot, uh, unique, I haven't flown a unique drone, but just any of these other drone manufacturers, when you fly one of their drones and you come back to DJI, it is just totally evident that it flies better than any of these other drones do. It just feels better. Um, and I think that that's the biggest thing I love about these DJI drones is how they fly because what's a drone if it's got, okay, it's got a great camera, it's got great flight time, it's quiet, it, it looks cool, but what's all that if you can't fly it properly? Um mm -hmm. It, it, the Mavic Air 2, in my opinion, is the best flying drone that DJI sells. And I see some chatter here in the um, in the chat talking about a smart controller uh, update so that we can use it with the Mavic Air 2. And that's something that I'm just really looking forward to. I recently purchased a uh, smart controller, and sometimes I choose to fly the Mavic 2 Pro over the Mavic Air because of the smart controller. It's so good. So I'm looking forward to that update. But nonetheless, that controller for the Mavic Air 2 is great. It's so oh, it good. is. You know, it, you know, that's one of my favorite things about that. Yeah. And, and I saw that in, in Lauren, you know, Lauren's been on the show with us several times, you know, and he was telling us about, about, he said, look at the design of the controller for the Mavic Air 2, you know, when the pictures came out and I said, you know, I said, it looks and feels just like the smart controller. Yep. I can tell you this. Okay. I was doing, I was, I was picked to be in the beta testing for the smart controller with a Phantom 4 Pro V2.0. Okay. Nice. And how was yeah. that? Okay, it was so funny because, you know, and uh, David from Kluge, who I had on recently, okay, had a great discussion with him about this. He was part of this, too. And then all of a sudden, it went on for like two months, and then we heard crickets from DJI, nothing. I mean, it just it was just like silent, the forms, there was nothing on there. We both pinged DJI, and I asked DJI, I said, okay, you know, they just, when they re-released the Phantom 4 Pro V2.0, I said, okay, I said, are you guys going to go ahead and release a software update to work with a smart controller. So we yeah. have plans at this time, da, 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 you know, and then what, you know, it was just like all of a sudden, boom, you know, one of my friends said, you need to take a look, Bill. I think there's the update. And I can tell you this, Billy. Okay. Flying that with the smart controller is an out of this world experience. Yeah. I guarantee you that it's not, and you know, you're not holding the big ball. I mean, the big bulky Phantom four controller. Okay. You're holding mm -hmm. the smart control. I mean, it's just like night and day. I know. It's so great, too, just being able to, like, you take out the drone, turn that on. You take out the remote, turn that on, and you're gone. You're flying. Whereas, like, I just felt it's so cumbersome to unscrew the sticks, unfold it, fit the phone into the Mavic 2 Pro remote controller. Yeah. Um, the Mavic Air 2 is a little bit easier to set up, in my opinion. And I like how the design resembles the smart controller design like a lot. I mean, it's basically a squished version of it without the screen. So it feels really good in the hand. But there's just no better feeling than that smart controller. And I see Jaybird asks, he says, hoping for a smart controller too, Billy. Uh, I, I'm I'm going to say right now, I don't think we're going to see a second version anytime soon. I don't have any like insider information and I, I haven't heard anything about a second remote coming soon. But the reason I'm thinking this is because DJI just came out with their M300, the big 
you know, uh, Matrice drone, which that thing is like a whole different animal. But the controller for that is the smart controller. So they just released this brand new enterprise drones or this brand new enterprise drone. Um, and those those class of drones don't get updated as frequently as a consumer level drone does. It'll be every three, maybe four ish years that we see a major upgrade. So my thought process is that if they have the smart controller coming with the M300, it's probably going to be in commission for a little bit longer. I love DJI's approach that they're taking where they have this one smart controller and it's a universal controller for all things DJI. And I hope that they can, just like they made that commitment to ADS-B, they can make a commitment to the point where all drones coming out will be compatible with the smart controller. And if you've got that smart controller, you can then buy drones without the remote controller that it comes with. So you can buy the Mavic Air 2 at a discounted price with no remote controller, or you can buy mm -hmm. the brand new Mavic 3, we'll just call it that, without the controller because you've got the smart controller already. I, I love that platform and I love that idea and I hope that they continue moving forward with that. Yeah, you know, and, and, and I have to say this, you know, I when Ron was getting ready, R Ron came down to Florida last year and we went to the beach and, and, and we flew and and I kind of sold him on the Mavic 2 Pro because he had the Mavic Pro up and, mm -hmm. you know, the we were capturing a sunset. Now, you know, and one of the things Ron and I talk about all the time is the low light sensitivity of the Mavic 2, Mavic 2 Pro. I mean, it's just it's just off the charts. So you get That's those. Cool terrific sunsets okay well he had his mavic pro up and he says come here bill take a look at this and he was just showing me the screen it was so dark okay with his mavic pro and then he looked at mine and i think that sold him on it and then yeah I ended up talking him into getting the smart controller bundle okay and at first he was having all kind of problems getting the wi-fi hooked up and everything with mm -hmm. it but then he did and he's just like bill he says that was one of the best decisions i've ever made it's just and, and you know it's it's so good and i love how you can you can like switch between multiple drones with it so i've got the mavic 2 zoom and the mavic 2 pro and having that one remote controller you just go to the settings choose the drone you're flying and you're connected there, there's no yeah. to push any buttons or whatever i don't know how many i don't i think you can i don't know if there's a limit on how many drones you can store in there but it's got room for more than two so when the mavic air 2 is compatible it'll be great to be able to have these three drones that work with the same remote controller um yeah. and it it doesn't even come down to like a, a convenience standpoint, but it's also a comfortability standpoint. Every time you get a new remote controller, it's a little bit of like rewiring your brain has to do to understand how to grip it, understand how to fly with it. But if you can use that same remote controller, the experience is almost the same every single time, which is it's it's something that you just can't beat. You know, one of the things, you know, we talked about like last week, we talked about our our, our favorite things about the Mavic Air 2 when I had Ron and Marcus on. But one of the things I really liked was, you know, you, you mentioned about how the phone goes in the smart controller. Well, you know, how they did the antenna was just genius. Okay? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, that, that was so genius because, you know, one of the number one questions I get from Mavic Mini and now, you know, Mavic Mini usually in that group are, are like newbies, people that really haven't flown drones a lot, you know, is the positioning of the antennas, you know, and it's just like with the, with the Mavic Air, you don't have to worry about that, okay? You don't have to worry yeah. about positioning the antennas. It's done. It's automatic for you. I mean, that's... I know. You think, like, that's not an issue that you have until DJI solves it for you, right? Yeah. Or, it, yeah. It's kind of like, it's like these smartphones. They give you a feature and you're like, I didn't know I needed this until it came out. Until um, it came out, yeah. Yeah. You know, you Apple think, does that all the time. You know, and it's just yeah. like just some of the little touches, like how the cable is stored for the yeah. for the phone and, and how you know it's just, it's there all the time. You don't have yep. to go look in your bag or your case. It's mm -hmm. right there. I mean, you don't you don't have to mess around with that. In that and it folds up and it's compact and everything. And the other thing that I have to say is this, okay? It's like, you know, uh, you know, I, I look at the mini and then I look look at the Mavic 2 and then this, you know, and then and then I, I like the weight of it, okay? Now, yep. you know, feeling the, the, the mini to me is always it feels uh, and, and I hate to say it. I, I love flying the mini, but it feels like it's going to blow away in, I know. in some time. I mean, yep. you know, Mark no. has had the experience where he went, you know, he flies a lot in that in the Snake River Canyon up there. Yeah. And then he had a head, you know, he had a he, he was going into the you know, he was he had a tailwind, but coming back, he had a headwind. And he had to land it, you know, um, and then go find it, use the, the go oh. find me. And he did. But it's because of that wind. I mean, you know, yep. you know Which what I'm saying with the mini. I don't have to. Yeah. 
No. And you know what's funny? When the Tello first came out, I got it, and you know, I was trying it out, playing around with it. Uh, and I ha- and the, the Tello is the Mavic Mini is far superior to the Tello, but it was just funny because I had it sitting there and my neighbor was driving past and I turned around and said, hey to my neighbor. And in that time frame, in the five seconds I turned around, I turned back around and I go, where's the drone? The wind blew it like five houses down. So that was pretty funny. Um, but when you're talking about the Mavic Mini and you start looking at these different drones that are out that DJI sells, their whole Mavic lineup, I can't help but say that the Mavic Air 2 is the one to buy right now over any of what DJI sells, even over the Pro and the Zoom because of the value you get for the money. I mean, you're spending $800 on this drone. I think that you're getting relatively the same experience as you would with like a Mavic 2 Pro at $1,500. Now, you do lose some things like the Hasselblad camera with the one inch sensor. You lose the amount of sensors. Um, you don't have like a built in screen on the remote controller anymore, but like you've got to weigh in like, is that worth spending double the price of what the Mavic Air 2 is? And even for like beginners that are coming onto the scene and they're first starting to fly their drone, you obviously want to say, okay, a beginner drone is the Mavic Mini, but how often do you think you're going to fly that drone? Because you're going to quickly outgrow the Mavic Mini. You're going to find yourself saying, mm, I wish you could do a little bit more. So why not spend? And, you know, the extra money by the Mavic Air 2, I think that even though the Mavic Air 2 costs double of what the Mavic Mini costs, I think it gives you triple the amount of potential with the drone. Like there's, oh, absolutely. there's double, double the cost, but triple the value. So um, another thing I saw being brought up was um, ADSB. Have you had that encounter yet? With, with yeah, the- I did. And, and what was what was really funny was I'm getting ready to take off mm-hmm. and I see it pop up on the screen. OK. So, you know, and, you know, the blades are going, I'm getting ready to take off. So I open the box up. Okay. And I check the first, I check the first tick mark. Then I check the second filter and I check the third. Look everywhere on the screen. I'm not seeing a thing. All right. Yeah. And I'm not now, mind you, I didn't hear a plane. All right. Now, 20 minutes later, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a, doing something else and I'm getting ready to take off and I'm looking on the screen and there must have been a plane. He probably was no more than 200 feet up in the air, Billy. I mean, you could hear, you audibly yeah. hear it in the background. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I did a deep dive and I took a look at this. And there are some exceptions. Now, one of the exceptions is like planes that were built without electrical systems don't have to have ADSB. Now, that those that's really yeah. rare. That's like Piper Cubs that were built in the 1940s during World <laughs> War II. Okay. Now, it said certain classes of airspace you don't have to have your ADSB transmitter on. All right. And again, it's still, that's like, that's like very rare. I mean, it's not like, it's more the exception than rather the rule. So for most of the time in most places, it should be on. And then I'm like, okay, where is it? Okay. I yeah, mean, it was, I, how about you? So, so Sam quickly said, neither do crop dusters too, which yeah, uh, yeah they're, they're usually flying pretty low too. Um, so I've, I've encountered ADSB a couple of times, probably more than people would would imagine just because I'm here in the city and there's a lot more air traffic. Um, and I like it. I think it's so great. But I think that just like you said, how ADSB like they they there's some exceptions to when they need to turn their their transmitter on and off. I feel like there's going to be a couple of more years until we get into a point where like air sense in in as a whole is going to work the way that we probably want it to because right now it does a good job at showing some aircraft but it doesn't tell you what that aircraft is it doesn't tell you the height of that aircraft i think it'd be cool if it could maybe tell you like the distance from your drone to that aircraft and you could see it potentially going down or going up depending on which way it's going so i think that how it's implemented right now is great and there's room for it to grow. So obviously uh, the Mavic Air 2 has the hardware, so you'll continue to get these AirSense updates, but it's just something that I think they've got to add a little bit more to, but in its current state right now, I think it's cool. And I think that's going to be the way that we see the drone industry in terms of like uh, uh, regulations and rules kind of ease up a bit, like uh, beyond visual line of sight flying or, um, you know, flying, maybe above 400 feet. I, I don't know. There's going to be a lot of things that can really come about that are good from AirSense, which is awesome. Yeah, I think so too. And, and you're right. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, the, the first time when, when you get, when you get something that's new, you know, people, people are like, you know, yeah, you know, it's not going to be perfect, but, and I agree with you as far as like having, you know, knowing the altitude that this is at and knowing the distance. I mean, you know, that, I mean, yeah, that's really in essence how, how it should work, but you know, they'll get there because, you know, the yeah. software's there, obviously the hardware's there 
to to do the to, to receive that signal. So you know, just tweaking with with some software. I don't know if you knew this or not, but there was an update to the DJI Fly app today. I don't know if you saw that. No, I didn't. Was there anything okay. specific added? Well, there was there was a couple things for the Mavic Mavic Air two, and one of them was uh, the box that you um, when you're when you're doing tracking. Um, mm-hmm. it, 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 it helps with the box, but one of the things that was one of my pet peeves and Marcus was on this too, and I know he's in the chat, they added some color to a couple of the symbols in the upper right hand corner nice. on the app because remember those are in white. Okay. Now yeah. 99% of the time, the background, the sky is going to be white and you can't exactly. see those things. Okay. I think it was GPS and, and something or other. They made those red. Okay. And I saw that I pulled it up on the app today and I looked at it and I said, wow, this is so much better than it was. And it's, it's, you know, it it was. My issue with the fly app with it being new is that it doesn't have a lot of features that like the DJI go app has. Um, For example, the one thing that I think I'm missing, first of all, there's no gimbal pitch speed control. That is just killing me, man. The gimbal's way too fast right out of the box. They got to add something with that. Um, but there's another thing. Uh, you can't change how how long it takes for the batteries to cycle down. So usually I've got all my batteries to cycle down after 10 days. And, you know, chances are I'm going to fly that drone within 10 days. So I never have to worry about the batteries totally cycling down. But with this, it feels like it's maybe three or four days. And sometimes I've gotten caught where I go to fly the Mavic Air 2. I burn a couple of batteries and I forgot to plug that other battery in because I hadn't used it in three or four days mm-hmm. and it's like already half depleted. So that's kind of a pain. I think they need to add more into the fly app. Um, but to your point about them adding the colors, my biggest gripe is that I feel like the fly app is uh, form over function. They tried to make it like this all black and white, cool looking app, but obviously that doesn't work that well because when the icons are white, you can't see them. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and I agree, I agree hundred percent about that. Well, you know, you know, I understand they're thinking to a de- to a degree uh, about making the app kind of simplistic because it was originally designed for the mini and people people with you know people with the mini being new to drones and everything and I understand that, but that doesn't mean that you can't add some things and and beef it up a little bit. Now they did exactly. that with like especially like with the camera on the mini they did kind of beef that up a little bit and for instance white balance you were you're able to able to, to do that which is huge. I mean, you know, like Ron said, you know, that's like one of the first things he was looking for and it wasn't there because, you know, Ron's a photographer at heart and he wasn't able to to adjust that. And and I know that that that's important to a lot of people. So, you know, they're starting to listen to that. Um, You know, the thing that I like about the Fly app is, you know, everything's not more than one level deep. You don't have to keep going down. You know, see, that's my big I love the go. Well, you know, I know the go for app, you know, like the back of my hand. You know, it's, you know, I know where to find things because I've been doing it for the past four years and it's kind of like, you know, click, click, click. It comes right in. You know, but the fly app, you know, it's, it's like I'm still trying to find it, even though it's simpler. You know what I mean? Yep. And I agree with that. Here's my whole issue with it. And, and I like that, how it's not like five tiers down to try and get to something. But still, I feel like if they want to make it like a simplistic view so that, you know, newcomers can can only see exactly what they need to see i feel like there could be like a toggle for like advanced settings or not advanced settings or kind of like how they have some of the i know that it would kind of be a pain to have it buried but it'd be better to have them than not have them is just at the bottom of each of the tabs we've got like five different tabs across in the fly app at the bottom put an advanced section where if beginners didn't want to mess with those advanced settings, well, it's not really going to change per se how your drone flies, but it's there for the people that want to take advantage of them. So I feel like it's almost like a easy way out for them to say, Oh, it's for beginners. We're not going to add these settings when in reality, I feel like they probably should have, and just have like an advanced toggle on there because um, that was one of my biggest gripes about the Mavic mini. And I think that right now with the Mavic air too, and I'm hearing it from some people that it's like, I don't like it because it uses the fly app, which is a shame. And I think that they're slowly phasing out the go app for the fly app, which I'm okay with if they add some more functionality to the fly application. We saw them phase out the old DJI go app for the new DJI go app. And I think that now everything is going to transition to the fly app. And um, I, I just hope they make it more of a point to add more settings and features in there because there's things that desperately need to be added. Yeah, I agree 100 percent because, you know, it's like, you know, when you're when you can tell that the instant you go to fly like 
you know, when I fly the Phantom 4 or when I'm flying the, uh, the Mavic 2, you know, it's it's just like, boom, it's like, you know, you know, I, I have to, my brain has to readjust to, you know, to where settings are and everything. And, you know, and it's, and see, and I think the word for me is robust, okay? Um, I don't feel that the Fly app is robust like the yes. Go 4 app, you yep. know, plain and simple. I, I agree with that. And just opening up my phone, something that I really like about the Fly app, um, it's taking forever to load here. So if we go, if you go to the Fly app, what I really like is how directly from the home screen, right, when you're on this screen, mm -hmm. it's a little bit overexposed. But when you're on that home screen, you can tap in the top left corner and it brings you directly to the map so that you can analyze the airspace. Now, you could do this with the Go app by entering device and then going into the map or whatever. But what's great about this is I can go anywhere in the United States. I can zoom all the way out and go down to Washington, D.C., and I can see what the airspace looks like down there. It doesn't restrict to like a small radius. So this is really good to use just to be able to understand airspace where you're going at. And I just like the interface of the map a lot better. They really integrated it well. Um, so that's one thing I, I really like about the Fly app. Yeah, they did a great job with that. And, 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 it, was, and it makes it very easy when you're looking at that. Yep. All right, we're going to kind of switch gears here just a little bit as far Definitely. as as drones. The Evo Two. Now I've watched your videos on it. Okay? Yeah. Now you know, you know, it, it, I know what I know what Ken has to say before before, I, <laughs> and I'm not going to say it. Okay, but I want to hear I want to hear hear from you. What's your overall You know, what's your overall evaluation of the Evo Two? So, I feel like I might be putting. Uh, what is that? What is that saying? It's like the foot before the horse or something. Heart before the horse. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I might be skipping too far ahead here. Um, I've got a video coming out probably tomorrow uh, comparing the Mavic Air 2 to the Autel Evo 2. And I saw a comment on one of my Autel, the Autel video uh, that I made where it was like the Autel Evo 2's biggest problem. Um Which for those of you that didn't see, the drone like twitches to the left when it flies in sport mode, which is in my opinion unacceptable because – uh, while people might say, oh, well, ludicrous mode isn't made for filming cinematic video, the whole entire drone is literally kicking to the left, which is just not something that you want to happen. Um, but on that video, somebody commented that the Autel Evo 2's biggest problem is the Mavic Air 2, and they're totally right. I mean, this drone comes in for $800. It's basically half the price of the Autel Evo 2, and it gives you the core functionality that the Autel Evo 2 does so well. 48 megapixel photos. It shoots 4K video at 60 frames per second, but at the end of the day, 8K video is something you might try and say, these file sizes are huge. I don't feel like editing this. Um, it's still got a great flight time. It's a lot smaller. So here's my thing on the Evo 2 is that uh, if you're a power user and you want the best of the best, the Evo is the one that you go after right now, right? Because it's got the best flight time. It's got the best camera. It's got uh, all these sensors on it. It's got so much to going for it. Um, but there's a couple of issues that I feel that hold me back from flying it. One of which is the controller, not a big fan of the controller, uh, how it feels when you fly it. I, we were just talking about how smooth DJI drones are. Uh, and when you come from an all, when you come from a DJI drone, uh, which is like a Ferrari, the Autel feels like a Chevy a Fiat. I don't know something that's, you know, just not as precise. Um, and then, Another thing that I don't like about it is the app experience. It's a lot like the Go application, but it just feels like th there's a lot of clunkiness to it. Like if I want to change from my regular flying mode to ludicrous mode, I need to go to the settings. I need to change to ludicrous, and then I need to change the ludicrous mode to 45 miles an hour. Like it is a five-step process to get into ludicrous mode. When on the DJI drones, it's just sport mode. That's it. So That's right, yeah. I, I think that Altel has got a a great drone again best in class in a lot of these different areas but there's a lot of ways that it falls short that i feel like it shouldn't fall short because of how it's priced right i mean fifteen hundred dollars you want a drone that can like cook food for you but it yeah, doesn't really yes yeah, well you know you know and, and i gotta say this i haven't flown the evo 2 but i did fly the evo 1 and you know the very first thing when and i was when rick was down here and, and i held it and the first thing i said Good God, this is heavy. Okay, I mean it's physically it is it is a very heavy drone. And I also say this too. Okay, and I've said this since day one because I had an X Star Premium, and I know I know Ken did as well. 
Autel does great with their hardware. Okay. I, I don't, yeah. uh, you know, their hardware, they are just spot on with that. Okay. Well, I think where their big Achilles heel is, is, is their software because, you know, with the X star premium, by the time I sold it, they were still on beta with that. Okay. They never got out of that. But when yeah. I was playing Rick's Evo, all right. One of the things that I noticed with it, you know, and, and, you know, and, and you don't, and like you said, you, you get spoiled when you fly DJI drones. Okay. Cause yep. you know, you, you, when you're flying straight, okay. It's pretty much going to fly straight unless there's, there's a lot of side to side wind or something going on. And but, even then it'll compensate for it. Even in that wind, like you fly the Mavic Mini and it's blowing and you're like, I can't believe it's that steady. So it's still so good. And then, you know, and then with, with the Evo, you know, it's, it's kind of like it, it does that. It does that gradual. I mean, it's, it's noticeable. Like if you fly drones, it's noticeable. If you're not, if you don't fly drones all the time, you don't notice it. But if you do, you know, you know that it's just, you know, it's doing that. I mean, it's like, you know, it's not straight and true with that. And, and, you know, somebody who's coming from flying a DJI drone is going to notice that. But if the Autel is your very first drone, you're going to think that it flies great. But it's just kind of being spoiled where you're like, this doesn't fly as good as I'm used to. So there's three things I pointed out in my comparison video between the Mavic Air 2 and the Autel Evo 2 that I'll share with you guys. And it's just a little bit of like a gripe that I have with the design. Um, first of all, it feels unfinished to me. Like this front portion here just seems fat, right? It seems fat. I feel like it just doesn't really look right. That's a that's a nitpick. But also you have this like big bump up here, right, to accommodate for the sensors. The bump just kind of looks a little bit weird in my opinion. Uh, these back legs, look at how far they stick off of the drone. Like yeah. that, this gets caught on absolutely everything inside of my backpack. Um, perhaps one of the things that I'm really upset about because I carry like these drones around a lot. You see these side propellers, how far they stick off of the drone. If yeah. you hold the drone, you are grabbing propeller. Propeller. Like, like and it's it's really uncomfortable. Like these these propellers are sharp. Any drone you buy, I've I've just like moving around the Mavics, I've nicked myself on these propellers because they're fairly sharp. So when you grab this drone and you're like grabbing it by propeller, it's just it's really uncomfortable. So um in terms of the design, I feel like it could have been a lot better, but it's kind of something that's easy to overlook when they give you 40 minutes of flight time, an 8K camera, and 12 sensors. <laughs> yeah, you know, well, one of the things that, you know, Ron, Ron and, and Marcus and I kind of talked about with this was, you know, you have to have a system big enough to handle that kind of a drone, whether it's the 8K yes. one or the 6K one. I mean, you know, and, and I had people, I had people arguing with me, Billy, and saying, saying, well, oh, you could do this and you can do that, you know, and I'm saying, wait a minute, time out here, guys. Okay. You know what? If you don't have the RAM on your computer, if you don't have a beefy enough CPU on the computer, if you don't have a video graphics card beefy enough to handle this, okay, you're going to choke your computer. It's just going to, it's, you're going to bog the whole thing down. It's not going to do it, you know, and then even, okay, say you do all that. All right. I said, how many people have an 8K TV? to watch watch and it doesn't it doesn't happen the best you can do is you know dumb it down to 4k i mean you know yep. it's just why you know you know I, I there's nobody in the world that's more of a resolution freak than i am i would shoot in the highest resolution that i could at all times and after my my i guess experience shooting 8k with this drone i just wouldn't do it i mean one minute of footage is one gigabyte on your hard drive um and then from there, with an Apple computer, a MacBook Pro, using Final Cut Pro, it took 23 minutes to export one minute of 8K footage. So I, up I uploaded my first flight video with the Evo that was about 19 minutes in 8K, and it took like six and a half hours to export. Now, I have trouble figuring out exactly how 8K fits into the Altel Evo 2 because I don't know who it's supposed to be for, right? Like if you're – if you are on a Hollywood set and you demand an 8K workflow, I'm, I'm like reciting this right from my video that I'm going to upload tomorrow, but it's fine. So um, if, you're an, if you're a cinematographer, you have an 8K workflow. You demand a drone that shoots 8K. The Altel Evo 2 8K is the last drone you're looking for. I mean you're going to want something that writes to an SSD and not a micro SD card. You're going to want um, you know, something that has a beefier codec like not H.264, H.265, um, and you're going to want a bigger sensor, right? Like they're cramming 8K into this half-inch sensor. But then also the Autel Evo 
uh, to appeals to people like you and I, everyday people that just fly drones, um, people who fly for fun, people who fly drones for commercial purposes like work. And if you're flying this drone every day and you're making videos every day, is it really worth it to have that constant 8K workflow and deal with those six and a half hour render times for videos that you shoot for people? Like it's just, it, it's not. And people it, argue that that 4K is overkill. I've been shooting and uploading in 4K since I started my YouTube channel back in, uh, in 2016. And um, it's something that I like because obviously 4K monitors are a little bit more uh, available, I guess now. They're cheaper. Yeah. People have them. People are upgrading to them. But 8K, man, that that's just a leap that I don't think that we're going to be taking anytime soon, if at all, because I think that 4K is just that perfect sweet spot. It is, you, you know. And, and here's the thing, and, and I want to we'll we'll, we'll kind of we'll kind of wrap this up, and then we'll move on to Skydio, which I, I definitely want to talk to you about. Um, you know, the the whole thing with 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 the 8K, 4K, everything. You know, I kind of get and I kind of understand where I tell what I tell was thinking here. OK, because, you know, they want to try to be a step ahead of DJI. I understand that and I get that. OK, I get the 8K, I get the 6K the processing and everything with both both, uh, you know, these drones. I, I understand that. But, you know, you've gone they've gone so far ahead as far as future is concerned. You know, it does. Does it make it worth, you know, what? is the cost justify the means okay and like yep. you said processing a workflow and taking that long to process a workflow it's just it's not even worth it i mean you know yeah. if, if you're somebody that's constantly making videos i mean if you're shooting like for us for a feature film a hollywood movie that's one video you're kind of i mean it's a long video it's a long movie so obviously you want to take the time to get everything proper and correct but for like I'm distributing, you know, YouTube videos and real estate videos and just videos in general for people to watch on their computers and their phones. And if I'm lucky on a 4K TV, I'm not going to take the extra hour in my workflow to to shoot in 8K. It's just not worth it. And I even see um, somebody said Cliff said here that it's not a real 8K sensor. It's not. And yeah. and, and I in my video about the benefits of shooting 8K, you can zoom in on that image 800 percent and. Trust me, if you look at it compared to 4K, there is a lot of detail there, but it certainly isn't true 8K. In my opinion, 6K is like the sweet spot. You can downsample it and get some room so that you can upload in 4K. But even that, man, I mean, 4K is overkill. So it's it, it's marketing. At the end of the day, it's marketing. They have the first 8K drone. Great. Yeah, you know? yeah that's, you're 100% right. Well, Cliff Totten, you, you probably, I've had him on the channel before. He's fantastic. Um, uh, you know, he's hearing that there's going to be, um, some firmware updates as far as, as far as the camera's concerned on, 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 on both of the Evos. So kind of stay tuned for that. I think that's going to be interesting. Well, it actually recently did get an update that, that, um, upgraded the camera. Uh, I haven't really just had the time to test it. In fact, I actually probably don't think it's going to be something that I cover just because I got busy and I updated and I couldn't get footage from before and then after. But regardless, um, I like to see that they're taking those steps. I think the camera is already fantastic. It does a lot of things really well. So any changes they make is going to be, you know, welcome changes. But yeah, I mean, 8K is just, it's, it's overkill, you know, <laughs> it's like, well, th this was funny. We, you know, m my wife was saying, you know, and I'm going to talk, want to talk something about Skydio too, because, you know, yeah. I know Ron and Marcus just absolutely love theirs. And then I kind of bailed out, you know, and uh, my number was almost, it was, it was a, it was, it was called the next day. Okay. When I decided to bail out from, from Skydio and, you know, and I remember Ken, he, 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 he texted me and he said, you know, after he had a, had the Scotty O2 for a couple, he said, you made a good decision, Bill, because yep. it's not really OK. This in his words, you know, I don't want to put, you know, I'm kind of paraphrasing, you know, it's not what you think it is. You know, you know what we normally, um, you know, we're used to the DJI, you know, yes. kind, of, kind of drone, you know, for, for lack of a better term and getting it up there and doing it. It's not that kind of a drone, but what it does it does exceptionally well. Okay. Yeah. And, it's, and, you know, well, I have, I, I pinned your, your beginner's guide. Cause it was, you know, once again, you. you know, I, I'm just going to, I'm just, I'm just going to say this. Okay. Nobody does better tutorials than Billy Kyle. Okay. Thank you, you. Because, because you know why? And, and, and I know this. Okay. Because when I first met you, when we were at um, the Mavic two event in New York city, yeah. I saw you even had kind of like, 
when, when you were photographing the drones, your tongue was kind of hanging out to the side. Like <laughs> good guitar player is really, is really into it. Okay. I can yeah. tell you, you're so into it and you're so meticulous about detail. And that's, that's my favorite thing about, about your channel, Billy is Thank you know, you. tutorials because you, you know, you, you don't, you don't miss something. There's no gap there. Okay. You hit everything. Okay. Because a lot of guys, a lot of guys, you know, they'll, they'll cover something, but they don't give you the detail. And that's, you know, I'm just want to, want to pat you on the back for that. And that's something I've, 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 that's why I fell in love with your channel is, is your tutorials. I mean, they're just, they're just killer. They, they really are. But Thank you. And, and that's why I did that with, with the Skydio too, because I watched that and I'm just like, you know, now I'm wanting one after watching your beginner's guide. Okay. And, and, and I think the thing, one of the things that impressed me the most about this is the beacon. Okay. Yes. It, it just, it just, it's, it's flawless. Cause I know um, Sean Oz was on with Ron and I on Monday night, I was on their show a while and he was talking about the beacon and Ron and Marcus were talking about the beacon. And I was like, you know, this thing is like, and, and I've seen their videos and I've seen your videos. I mean, it's just like, wow. It's, it's money. First of all, to your point about my tongue hanging out, sometimes I get so in the zone, I'll look at my phone and I've got like 40 text messages and like people are trying to get a hold of me, like my mom and my dad, they're like, Hey, are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm like, Oh, sorry. I'm just like, you know, 10 hours has passed and I'm just like so busy doing something. <laughs> but, um, so, so here's the thing about the Skydio, right? It's like, you're right. It's flawless in what it does, like the tracking or whatever. Obviously I had a couple bumps, like mine totally decided to dive bomb into the water. Like just some strange things have happened. I think, I think that Skydio as a company, their, their progression is like Skydio one, their very first drone is like proof of concept. Like, look, we've got this drone. It's very expensive. You can buy it if you want to, but this is our technology. This is what we're doing. And this is what our company is going to be about. And it's tracking, right? And it was it was very like, wow. Like that's how everybody knew Skydio after the Skydio 1. And then the Skydio 2 was all about taking that technology and just making it more affordable, right? And they made it more affordable with a $1,000 drone. I mean, the, the Skydio 1, the R1 was $2,700, right? Nobody's spending $2,700 on a drone unless it's the Inspire 2, right? Um, yeah. So the Skydio 2, I still think it's in that proof of concept stage. Like they're saying, look, we're going to make it cheaper. We're going to get into more people's hands. And that'll then broaden and grow our brand, right? Now, even more people know about Skydio because people are actually flying them and people are actually using them, um, opposed to just seeing like reviewers have them and like, like, you know, tutorial videos or whatever. But now I think that the Skydio 3 is going to be the drone to have, or maybe even if they decide to go the route of having like a Skydio 2 Pro or something, if they can do something to improve upon it, just any little bit, it's going to push it over that edge of being like, yeah, this is legit. Because right now I think it's still in the proof of concept phase, but they, they have their minds to it. They have their mindset. They know what they want to do. And it, it's going to, it's going to come to that point where it's just going to be like, this is, this is incredible. Cause even some of the stuff I see it doing now is nuts. I think, I think that a really good business model and I'll give this, I'll put it out there for anybody. Start a Skydio 2 rental program because Ooh. It's a great drone to bring out for like a weekend of skiing or a weekend of biking. You're like, man, I'm going to have this weekend of just action and I want a Skydio too. And yeah, you can rent it for like 200 bucks for the weekend, uh, but it's just not that drone you want to drop like a thousand dollars on and have all of the time, you know, because it, it, like the Mavic Air 2 is great to have because it has active track three and you can use it for those certain instances where you're tracking, but damn, it is a good drone to fly too. And that's where the Skydio kind of lacks. So like, if you know, you've got a great weekend coming up of camping kayaking hiking all this stuff i want to rent a skydio but do i really want to spend a thousand dollars and have it i don't know well you know and see that's where ken came from and, and you know he was coming at me from a dji kind of standpoint which yeah. i completely get and i understand that okay now yeah. you know it's just I, what, what kind of hit his, his you know, and then i saw like one of your first videos when um you were going over that bridge you were you were on, on your boosted board you were going mm -hmm. over that bridge and then you were coming back and then I'm looking like, oh my God, it's gonna hit the phone lines. Okay, it was just, yeah. it was just like I was, I was just like, I was holding my breath the whole time watching the video. I mean, it was just like, oh my gosh, it was so close. But you know, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Finish your point. No, no. What I was, what I was gonna say was, I think for you, I think you were learning. You were kind of like learning as you go with something like this because you know. You're you're like me, you know, and like all of us, you know, we have a controller in our hands and, and, and we're doing this and there's no controller here. OK, uh -huh. it's kind of like 
using using its own mind. And I think you brought up a good point. OK, you know, it's it's still a proof of concept because basically what happens whenever we get a new drone, OK, no matter how much beta testing DJI or Autel or Skydio does, we're still beta testing it. OK, when they come out. All right. Really, truly and honestly. And I think everybody in the chat would agree. You know, we're the ones that are really putting it through its paces because you know, you think about all the combinations and permutations of what you can do with a drone, okay? You can't simulate that in a in a manufacturing environment, but real world, yes, you can. Yeah, and it's it's like with any tech product. I feel like you get it and it's like, hey guys, this is our version of it being finished, but let us know what you want in it. You know, like they'll be like like uh the iPhones, for example, or anything like that. Like they release and then it's like, well, hey, we found this, this, and this issue, and then it gets fixed. Um but oh, I had something I wanted to say, but now I totally forget. But regardless, um, I think the Skydio 2 is – it's it's so good at what it does and it's so great. But the whole piloting like aspect of it, it's like if you want a drone to fly, the Skydio is your last option. Mm. Um, oh, oh I, I remember what I want to say. You were talking about uh, my reaction when, this, when it went through the power lines. Yeah. Uh, I, I just recently started – like I would say last year doing these first flight videos – and I actually – like I never thought that they were like really, I guess, beneficial, right? I mean what what do you get from seeing some guy fly a drone for the first time? But I feel like it's a cool learning experience. It gives you an opportunity to set like your base expectations and your base understandings of a drone and then build out from there on your channel. Uh, and another thing is like some of the reactions that – that I might have or anybody else might have when they first fly the drone is really cool to see because even with the Mavic Mini, when I first got that drone, I didn't have high hopes for it. And by the end, I was like, whoa, this thing is awesome. And my mood kind of totally shifted, which um, I could tell people like commenting were like, could could catch on to that. And they were like, wow, like I I'm shocked right with you. Uh, or like, wow, I can't imagine that the Mavic Mini was able to be that stable and it was that fast and it could get you that type of footage. And it's like, I'm sold. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I think that those first flight videos are really cool because it captures that, like, raw emotion. And, like, I, can, mm -hmm. I just can picture my, my reaction now when I saw that go through the power lines. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> I mean, but, well, Valerie was sitting there watching it with me. I said, oh, Billy's got to come here. You know, and, and what I do is, you know, I have my iPad in bed at night and we're watching this and I'm showing yeah. it. She goes, oh, my God, it's going to hit the power line. <laughs> you know, it's like we're watching this together. It's just like we're sweating. We're sweating bullets like you are. We're watching it. We're like, oh, my gosh. It was just it was a riot. But, and, you know, it's like and, and I think you hit it right. I think, you know, one of the things early on that, that we knew was, you know, that controller, you know, it, it's it's a it's a it's an Anafi controller. And it's I know. Just like, it was it was definitely an afterthought, you know, and I think yeah. and I think, like you said, being that this is kind of like their second proof of concept, you know, I think they'll spend the time and they'll devote the time to building a more robust controller type of system to give, you know, the DJI people, you know, a level of DJI experience with the drone. Yes. You know? And and I totally agree with you. I mean, so have you have you felt the Skydio 2? Would you have you like um felt it at all have you gotten somebody's sky deal that you've like kind of seen in person no i haven't seen it in person when you just have it you kind of get this understanding that like yeah this is a quality piece of technology like it was built well designed well i know they use 3d printers which is just great um in fact when it felt so good that like when i took it out of i, I got it during the winter time so it was still like a little bit cold it had been sitting on the truck for a little bit i got it inside unboxed it immediately and i was like this thing is made of metal because so I started holding it. It felt so good and it was cold to the touch. I was like, this thing is made of metal, but it was actually plastic. Um, and you can just feel that everything is made and designed so well. And I think that they could take that and make a great controller. Like if they can design a drone really well, they can make a controller that's designed really well too. Um, so yeah, definitely an afterthought. And I hope that uh, with their next drone, they design their own remote because that's just the way to get the best experience. I think you're right on that. And I think, and I think they'll do it. And, you know, and I think all of us, and, and I'm still rooting for them because, you know, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, taking a, I'm taking a look and seeing what they did. You know, it, it's like with this whole thing. Okay. You know, it's an American company and really, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, even though, you know, part of it is, is coming from China and whatnot, all the assembly is done here in the United States, which is fantastic. And, you know, and, and we want them, you know, everybody wants them to succeed. I mean, really yeah, is where you we're know. at with that. So, um, 
you know, it's already eight o'clock. So it's just like this hour goes by way too quick. I know it does. Like I've said, every time I've had you on, I could probably have you on for three hours and it's, <laughs> it wouldn't be enough. And these guys, and you know what? Everyone would stay in the chat because, <laughs> because, because I haven't having you around because it's just absolutely fan. You're just an incredible wealth of knowledge, Billy. Thank um, you. You know, one of the things I'll say before we close out, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll let you give some closings here. But one of the things I wanted to say is, you know, the drone commit, you know, and, and I and I don't want to uh, go over, you know, what happened yesterday, you know, or what happened <laughs> over the weekend. It was just a total debacle. OK, I will if you want me to <laughs> go ahead, go for it. You can you can well, you can enumerate on that. I, I think there's a big picture thing to be learned here. Uh, so if for those of you that are aware of drone you who they are they made this video about people flying beyond line of sight i think that they were targeting a couple of people myself included with some of the range tests that i've done which i do per totally for educational purposes being able to show people exactly how far a drone can fly what experience to understand um or, or to i guess uh uh to to what it I'm totally losing my words here. W what type of um, interference they might hope to expect from a drone. Um, and there's a lot to be learned from taking this drone out and understanding how they change and how they are putting in the transmission system in these drones. Like with the Mavic Air 2, how it's got this upgraded version of OcuSync 2. Well, is it actually upgraded? The only way to test that is with a range test. Um, and of course, Dustin Dunhill, you know, great videos oh, yeah. doing mainly range tests. I mean, he takes these drones and he pushes them to the limits. Um, and drone, you just went as far as saying that everybody on YouTube basically doesn't make good uh, drone content and that everybody's just looking for clicks when they're selling courses that are like $2,000. Now I think that their courses are great for people that really want to get involved in the commercial drone space. Uh, they were talking about how it's like, like it's, it's, uh, it's necessary for certain agencies in government or whatever. But I look at Drone U as a company. I look at them as somebody that's very closely associated with big business. Um, and as somebody who really tries to, to connect with people who fly drones for fun, and as somebody myself who flies drones for fun all of the time, um, you know, I feel like Drone U is against the community. I feel like uh, they're in it a little bit for the money, which, you know, it, it's okay. People got to make their money here and there. But at the end of the day, they kind of took an attack on everybody who posts drone videos. Bill, that includes you. It includes me. It includes Ken. It includes both Kens, Ken, Ken Dono, Ken Heron. It includes Marcus. It includes every single person in this chat that flies drones, flies drones and makes videos about them. Um, they just kind of took a stab at everybody. And I feel like that was very low. Um, they took the video down, so you can't really go and watch it. But just the whole entire thing was about how people who post videos on drones, on YouTube, shouldn't be trusted. And I think at the end, it just kind of came out that they're the ones that shouldn't be trusted because the entire time it was just like, you want to be a better drone pilot, you want to crush the competition, buy our course, spend $2,000 for a weekend. And you know what? Ken said something really good in his video, um, which Ken's video was perceived so well by any and everybody in the drone community. Yeah. There is somebody for absolutely anything on YouTube to get your content and to get your general understanding of drones for free. I mean, Bill, something that you do so well on your channel is you're always first with the news. I mean, you're always out there. You're always making sure that everybody's up to date, whether it's FCC filings or whether it's it's information that people need to know about upcoming drones. I mean, that that's your strong suit, in my opinion. People might come to me for tutorials. People will go to Ken for who knows what. Uh, people will go to to Ken Heron for, for the funny stuff. I mean, Ken Dono laid it out really well. And, um, you know, the best way to practice flying your drone and get good at it is flying. I, yeah. I don't think you really need to get this really high end course to become a good drone pilot. I think that if you've got a week and you devote two, three hours to flying every single day and you watch some YouTube videos, you're good. You're going to do really well. Well, you know, the whole thing was, and I typed a comment to Ken and he said, agreed. And I said, it was complete, total, it was the opposite of community. Mm -hmm. um, what's the message from, from that? Video? Completely opposite of that. And, you know, we're, we're here for one another. All right. And, yep. you know, and, and if you don't do that, then, you know, you really don't belong in the community. And they took the video down and I think they're going to suffer because of it. I mean, they really kind of shot themselves in the foot with that. Yeah, it's, it's a 
it's a shame because I really do think that they're a really good good source of knowledge. Um, they're they're kind of taking a dive deeper into the commercial drone space, even deeper than I try to go sometimes. Which I think that there's a, a void that needs to be filled in that area. But a lot of it is, is just filled with like, hey, this is like the starting point. But if you want more, you have to come and buy our course. And it, there's there's been thoughts in my mind like, hey, you know, maybe maybe I can offer some sort of trade tra- um, paid training course online. But at the end of the day. It's 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 all about being able to share that knowledge, and it's all about being able to have like the sense of community, and that's that's just the one thing I don't want to destroy. So yeah, absolutely, and you know what, and 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 you don't, and anybody that knows you, and anybody that's been around you for any point 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 of time, or for any decent amount of time, you know that you're all about. You know, when you're going out there and doing doing your doing your tutorial videos, okay, it's just, it's not a job for you. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, for me, I like getting, you know, I like you said, I like getting that news out to people because people really appreciate that. I get a lot. Bill, thank yes. you for letting me know mm-hmm. that. Thank you for thank you for, for doing that. And of course, I try to verify things before I go out there and say something like that, because I, I I was jumping a little too soon at times and, and it wasn't the, wasn't the case. But now I verify things and then I go out with it. You know, for you, your tutorials are just, you know, it, it's educational. I think I think you know when you're when 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 you're doing your tutorials when I'm doing my thing when Ken's doing his thing you know when Marcus and Ron are doing their thing you know, okay you know we're doing this to help people to educate them to you know and I think the greatest satisfaction at the end of the day is getting that comment thank you for this you know oh yeah here's mm-hmm. here's here's an example you know and I'll do this right here before we close um, you know when I got my Osmo action okay the door fell off on it and I'm like all right. How in the world does this thing go back on? Well, <laughs> lo and behold, somebody put a video out with a GoPro Hero 5, I think. It says, you need to push on the waterproof pad. And boom, it comes up. So I did this for the Osmo Action. I'm, I'm close to like about 10,000 views on it. But I have like over over seven, 800 comments on it. And all of them are like, thank you so much for putting so this video out there. You know? And- and it's so great for like the people who are in the chat, right? Everybody saying, you know, thanks and whatnot. Uh, that's that's just all that you need. Um, obviously, you know, making like the ad revenue or whatever is is great. It kind of helps keep things afloat, put money back into the channel. But at the end of the day, it's that sense of community. It's kind of like you're you're doing a, a really big hobby. Um, and just like you said, how how with the tutorial video, right? You were trying to figure out how to put the door on. You now know more knowledge. So like when I'm making these tutorial videos, I'm teaching myself before I teach other people. And Mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I feel like it's kind of making myself better. And even every single time you're getting in front of the computer and and you're making a video, whether it's it's this really short video, whether you're live streaming right now, you learn something from that experience that you can take out and do on other things. Like I, I can't believe how all of the stuff that I'm doing on YouTube has helped me with like other things I wouldn't even imagine. You know, it's just like, being able to have this knowledge and information about drones helps with like camera stuff. So it's, it's pretty cool. Well, Billy, um, you have any closing thoughts before we, before we wrap things up? Uh, I, I already said in the chat, but just thank you guys for coming and watching. Um, you know, thanks Bill for having me. And, um, I, I feel like, you know, we had like a crazy start to the year and things are kind of still crazy with Altel Evo 2 and, and Mavic Air 2. And, um, I think that, you know, something that's kind of going to challenge the drone industry is that we might go into this lull. Like, man, we were like, bang, 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 power vision, Skydio, all tell Evo, Mavic Air 2. So I think we're going to go into to a lull right now, which is kind of like a sad thing to say. Um, you look at like the last Mavic Air, it was released, and then it was like a year and a half until they came out with the Mavic 2 Pro. So I could see it being a fairly long time until we see something from DJI. Again, that's just something that's kind of, you know, a guess from me. We could see something at the, at the, at the end of the year. I, I could be totally wrong. But regardless, I feel like the drone industry might go into a little bit of a lull now, but we've got a lot of drones to hold us over. And, um, you know, it's going to be really cool to see uh, how, how these updates continue to change these drones, because I know that DJI will be working on something for the Mavic Air 2. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, it, it's, you know, one of the things that I'll say before, before I close, close shop is this, is, you know, when, when it first comes out, and I think Lauren put it so well, you know, when you first get a drone, okay, DJI doesn't, they, they know it's going to need all these firmware updates, oh, but yeah. they don't do it all at once. Okay. They let you Go through it, and then okay, we're going to do this, and then okay, we're going to add that, and okay, they already probably have a lot of that code already written, so it's like it's it's not yep. that, you know, and it happens, and it's one of those things you look forward to it. It's just like you know, 
I look forward to a software release or a firmware release as much as I do a drone release because, you know, just the, the different things about this. Billy, it, I, you know, I, I could say this. Go ahead. Go ahead. It, it totally rejuvenates the drone, right? And look, I mean, there's there's a ton of people in this chat room. There's a ton of people that watch our videos. But imagine how many other people own drones and that don't come on YouTube. They're just playing around with their drone. But when a new firmware update comes out and, you know, maybe they haven't flown their drone in a while, it rejuvenates their interest in it. So, yeah, I mean, they, they definitely do it on purpose. But for us, I just wish they came out with it all at once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. Billy, you know, you're one of my favorite people. Just... And let me say this, is a people person, okay? And that's one of the things that I want to pass on to everybody in the chat, okay? Because I've, I've been around Billy several times, and I'll tell you what, he's the real deal, okay? I say this about everybody that I meet, okay? Like with Ken, okay? With Rick Smith, okay? With Billy, all right? And Kelly Shores, okay? You know, and Ed Ricker, okay? These guys are the real deal, okay? They're they're real people. They are, they are awesome to be around, okay? They're fun to be around, and, you know, they, like I said, you know, they do this because they like helping people. We like helping people. And, you know, um, you know, we get the bonus to talk about all these cool things, which, which I think is just, it's just blowing me away. I got a great guest coming up tomorrow night. Okay. For Tuesday night. Okay. I have, and it's been hundred percent confirmed. Brendan Schulman, vice awesome. president of legal policy and affairs for DJI is going to be on tomorrow night, guys. And we're going to be spending the whole night talking about remote ID. Oh, so, that's so cool. I'll yeah, be sure. Yeah, I'm looking, really looking forward to that. I'm glad I got that. And then next week, okay, we're going to have Mr. 51 Drones on, Russ. Oh, man. So that's, going to, be, that's <laughs> going to be a treat for everybody. So so mark these dates down, guys. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. I'm trying, still trying to, still trying to get Rick lined up and trying to get a hold of Rick sometimes is, is like next to impossible, but I want to thank, I want to thank so much Billy for spending an hour with us tonight. Oh, absolutely. Um, I could have easily spent two or three, know. <laughs> you know, as far as that's concerned. And I want to thank all you guys for dropping by in the chat tonight. You know, it was a great chat. I was looking at it the whole time. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for the super chats. Appreciate those, but thank you for your support, not only for my channel, but for Billy's. And in case your head's been under a rock for the last last four or five years, there's a link for Billy's channel in the description, okay? I, I hope you guys are subscribed to him because if you're not, shame on you guys. Anyway. Thank you again, thank, Bill. Thanks, Billy. Thanks so much, everybody. And remember, it's a great day to fly. We'll, we'll catch you guys later. Take care.